Hey guys, welcome to Tech Vitals. Today we are going to learn about object oriented programming in Python and we will learn about how to create class and objects in Python. So let me give you a brief information about object oriented programming. So object oriented programming is a programming module based on the concept of objects and the object is anything that has certain attributes and some behaviors. So in object oriented programming, we organize the software by defining the attributes and behaviors of those objects. So the attributes are stored as the field of objects and the behaviors are used as the methods of those objects. So for example, let's say we have an object of person and a person can have multiple attributes like the name, address, age, gender and so on. So we can define those attributes as the fields of that person and we can also define some methods that represents the behavior of that person like setting the name or getting the name or modifying the name or you know getting the address, changing the address and so on. We can do all these things by defining the class for that person. Class is known as the blueprint of the objects. We can create a class for any object and define all the required attributes as the fields and create different methods to perform various behaviors of that object. And the major advantage of the class is that we can reuse the same class for multiple objects. So for example, if we create a class for the person, now using just that one person class, we can derive multiple instance or multiple objects of the person. So let us see the example to get the clear understanding of class and objects. So to create a class, we use the keyword class and let's create a class for person object. And to define the attributes of person object, we have to use dunder init method. So this is double underscore init double underscore and in the bracket, we use self parameter. This method is called dunder init method. So whenever there is two underscore before and after the method name, that method is called dunder method. So since it is the init method, this is called dunder init method. We use this dunder init method to initialize the variables or initialize the attributes or the fields of the object. So in this case, we are creating the class for person object. So in this dunder init method, we initialize the fields or the attributes for the person object. In other programming languages like Java or C programming, this kind of method is called constructor. So in Python, we have this dunder init method. So inside this method, we declare what variables or what attributes do we want this person object to have. So for example, a person has a name, so we can type self.name and this self represents the object itself. So when we create the object of this person, that object will be passed as this self parameter. So we will take a look at that uh, in a bit, but for now, let's set the attributes of person object. So self name equals, let's give a non value for now. And a person can also have age. Let's also give non value for this. And a person can have address. Let's give non value. Okay, so here we defined three attributes or three fields for the person object that is name, age and address. Now let's try to create an object for this person and let's give these three values for these attributes. So to create the object of this class person, let's give the object name. So let's say person one equals, then we use the class name that is person and then this parenthesis. Okay, so here we have created a person one object for this person class. So this person one will be passed as this self parameter in this dunder init method. So here self will equal to person one. And whenever we create an object for the class, 
this dunder init method will be called at the beginning. So at this line, it will call this dunder init method by passing this person one as the self variable or self parameter. So it will go inside this method and it will initialize these three values. So since self is person one, here person one dot name will be none, person one dot age will also be none, and person one dot address will be none as well. So if we try to print person one dot name it should give none value so let's try to run this and as you can see it gave none value so person one dot age and person one dot address will also be none because all these three values are initialized as none so all these three values will be none. Now since we have the object of person that is person1 we can provide the value for these three fields so initially they are none but we can change that by providing the value so let's give person1.name equals let's say Paul then person1.age equals 25 and person one dot address equals let's say California okay so here we changed the values for our name age and address so now if we print person one dot name then person one dot age and person one dot address it should print the new values so let's try to run this So as you can see, we change the values for these three attributes or fields. So now person one that name is Paul, age is 25 and address is California. Now, just like we created this person one object, we can create as many objects as we like for the same person class. So let's create second object for this person. So let's say person two equals person and then this parenthesis now when we create this second object again this init method or the dunder init method will be called at the beginning so this time this self will be this person 2 because the new object is person 2 so at the beginning when we created the object person 1 the self parameter was equal to person 1 and now the self parameter will be person 2 so for this person 2 object it will again initialize these three values or three attributes so now self dot name will be equals to person 2 dot name so person 2 dot name will be none person 2 dot age will be none and person 2 dot address will also be none so if we try to print let's say person two dot name it should return none value so let's comment this out for now and we just want to print this line here so it should return none okay so this returned none value and just like we initialize the values for person one we can do the same for person two so let's give person two dot name equals john and now if we try to person two dot name and let's comment this first one so in this line we change the name of person two as john so if we try to run this we get john now as you can see we are reusing this person class for two objects and we can create as many objects as we want for the same class so for this object person1 it has its own set of values or own set of attributes and for the person2 object it has its own set of values so 
to clean the code a little bit, let's delete some of these additional codes and just like we initialized all the values for person 1, let's also initialize the values for person 2. So person 2 dot is equals let's say 30 and person 2 dot address be New York. So if we try to print person 1 dot name and person 2 dot name, both person 1 and person 2 are the objects of this class person but both of them have their own names and other attributes so if we try to run this the name of person 1 is Paul and the name of person 2 is John so this is the biggest advantage of class and objects because we can define the class just once and we can reuse this class to create multiple number of objects with their own set of attributes. Now here, initially, we are providing none values for all the attributes, but instead of providing this none value at the beginning, what we can do, we can just pass the values for these attributes as the parameters of this dunder init method. So let's say name, age, and address. And instead of these non values, we will get the value from this parameter. So for the self dot name, we'll take the value of this parameter, which is name. So we will give name for self dot name. For the self dot age, we will get the value from this parameter, which is age. So let's change this none to age. And in the same way, for this self dot address, we'll take the value from this parameter, which is address. So we'll give address. And now, instead of setting these variables or setting these attributes after creating the object, what we can do is we can just pass the value for all these attributes at the time of creating object itself. So here, inside this parenthesis, we will provide these three values. So name will be Paul, age will be 25, and address will be California. Now, when we create the object person1, this dunder init method will be called, and here this self will take the value person1 because this is the object, and then name will take the value Paul, age will take the value 25, and address will take the value California and it will set or initialize the variables or attributes in terms of these values and we can do the same thing for person 2 so we can pass the values for the attributes at the time of object creation so let's give John as the name 30 as age and New York as the address and now when we print the person one that name and person two that name, we will still get Paul and John. So let's run. And we got Paul and John. Okay, so now let's try to create some methods for the object. Now let's say the person has changed his address. So we have to be able to change the value of this self that address. For that object so let's create a method so that we can change the address of the object so let's say uh, change address and we have to give the new address so let's give new address and then we will change the address value for that object so self dot address means the address of that object that we are working with and we are trying to change the address for so that new address will be new address that we get from this uh, parameter so here the address of person 1 is California so let's say this person 1 moved to New Jersey then we can change the address of this person 1 by simply saying person1.change address 
and let's give the new value that is New Jersey so NJ and instead of printing the person one dot name let's print person one dot address and let's also print person one person two dot address so initially the address of person one was California but we changed the address to New Jersey so when we print the person one dot address it should print New Jersey and on the address of person two is still New York so this line should print New Jersey and New York so let's try to run this and as you can see it printed New Jersey and New York cool now let's try to see one more example for this lesson so let's say we want to print person 1 and let's see what it will print okay so it is printing the uh, object value because person 1 is the object of course so it is printing this uh, object value at this uh, memory location but let's say uh, when we print the object itself we want to display some information of that object then we can also do that by using another dunder method so just like this dunder init method we have dunder str method and we can return anything we want from this method so that when we print the object it will print that value returned by this str dunder method so let's say uh, we want to return the name of that object so we can do return self dot name so now when we print the object so here we are trying to print person one which is the object now instead of printing that object value it will go to this dunder str method and it will take the value returned by this method so it is returning self dot name so for person one uh, person one dot name is Paul so now when we print this person one it should print Paul so let's see and as you can see it printed Paul and in the same way if you try to print person two now it's returning the self dot name so it will return person two dot name so this time it will return John so let's run it again and this time it returned John so we can use this dunder str method if you want to display something instead of you know printing the object so it is really handy to display the information about that object and you can actually return anything so let's say you want to return the string value like this is str method or rather this is dunder str method so when we print the object it will return this is dunder str method and it will print this uh, string value so if we try to run this it is printing this is dunder str method we can even return let's say address self dot address and now it will return the address of the object so person 2 dot address is New York so when we try to print person 2 it should print New York as you can see so in this video we learned about object oriented programming and we learned how to create class and how to create the object of that class and how to set the attributes and how to use the methods using that object. We will learn more about class and objects in the next video. So that's gonna do it for this video. I'll see you soon with the next video. Till then, keep learning. Goodbye.